Hello, welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic journey. And today we'll be working with colored pencils. So you'll need your number two or HB pencil, a kneaded eraser, and some good quality colored pencils. Thank you for drawing with me. Thank you for being willing to do something new and different. That's important. So I'm gonna set my colored pencils aside for now. Um, I've got my kneaded eraser and my number two pencil. Let's figure out where everything goes. We got to leave enough space over here for his horns and his his big old ears and everything. So if I say, well, that that horn kind of comes out. I want that horn to be out here. Maybe this horn's going to come in here. And I, I'm not really trying to m make them even or anything. I'm just blocking in where they go. So then his head's got to be somewhere in here. It's kind of triangular shape. Just blocking it in. Don't worry about perfection here. His body, maybe I want that little tail to be right over there. Maybe I want that tail to almost touch the edge. That might be nice. Neck. Neck. Bodies, this is kind of ovally bean shape kind of thing kind of a bean shape legs are going to come down we're not going to cut his legs off um we're going to fade them as they come down um that's better than cutting them off straight at the edge sometimes you could do that but today we're just going to fade them out a little bit there's a leg there there's a back leg here Somewhere in there. So now we've established our size, how big we have to work with, where we want it to go. Now we can kind of go back into it and go, okay, he's got these big old kind of ovally ears that kind of come out here. Big old ear right there. His, his ears are almost, almost level. And that's about where his eyes are, just below his ears. So if you kind of block that in, just go, oh, there's going to be a little eye there. There's going to be a little eye over on this side. Nose is somewhere in the middle there. Kind of rounded shape. Kind of this Rudolph looking thing. Although if Rudolph were a deer, he wouldn't be a mule deer. He'd be a caribou, right? Because that's what reindeer are. They're caribous. And now that I've got my size in there, I can go in and start putting in just some little things. Like, here's one of those little horns. Their horn kind of comes up this way. One that goes up this way. Horns are never exact. They're never uh, symmetrical. His chin and his rear end are almost the same height. So the bottom of his chin and the top of his rear end are about the same height. So I can kind of come over there and drop that leg down there. Kind of goes with something like that. And again, these are guidelines. This is kind of like when we did ink. It's a guideline. It's, it's like the Pirate's Code. It's just going to help us. But I can change it. I can alter it as I draw. I can figure out what I need and what I don't need. Maybe some little guidelines to just show where that gray is in this his face. Remember, we're drawing with the side of our pencil, so everything is easily erased. We still want to be able to easily erase everything. 
He got some big old ears. So for me, that's about right. That I mean, there's there's a little bit that I can change. Drawing's kind of like focusing a camera. It's never right to begin with. You have to just keep tweaking until it's it's the way you want it. Although nothing really is perfect. As soon as you understand that, then I think you're more forgiving about yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the nice thing about art. It is what you want it to be. And if you want it to become perfect, you just try really hard and it'll get that way eventually. Or you'll get closer to it. Everything that I've drawn here, remember, has to go. I got to get rid of all that graphite. But I can't get rid of that graphite until I put color down on there. Because if I get rid of the graphite, then all my drawings are gone. Right? That makes sense. So I'm going to grab a purple, just a violet. Everyday violet. A blue violet would work here. Or a red violet would work here. I'm going to do my drawing. I'm going to pretend that this is ink. So if you were to do an ink drawing of like this, what would you leave in? What would you take out? So there's a lot of that horn that's up in there that is so light, you could just leave it out. Or some of these little light areas along his, his eye or his nose, uh, you just leave that out. Okay, and we're not going to draw a line around everything. So just keep that in the back of your mind. I'm just going to start left to right, top to bottom. Uh, I'm going to start with his, his antlers here. So, or his ear. You could start with the ear, little tip of the ear there. And again, I'm just going to pretend that this is ink. You can do dots and dashes. You can do, um, I like to just do little scribble kind of back and forth type things like that. And this is just, just pretend this is ink. This this end of his ear there you could leave out. It's very light. And maybe just pick it up again over here. I promised you that if, if you, you drew with ink, you'd never draw the same. And this is what I mean, is now you start thinking of all those edges, all those things that you can leave out in your normal drawing. You just don't have to draw them all in. That eye is pretty dark. You could just kind of go through that. This side of his head is really light. It almost blends into the tree in the background. So leave most of it out. You can go in and just add a little bit here and there. A couple dots, little dashes. Okay, I think you guys know what I mean. So I'm just going to go through and just do a little drawing as if this were ink. Some of those little parts of the antlers you could probably leave out. This top part of the antler you could leave out. You guys understand what I'm doing here? Right? If you follow my drift with the ink, this will come through. If I get rid of my graphite right there, my colored pencil kind of stays and my graphite goes away. And just remember, there's a lot of that you want to leave out. Okay, hopefully that's making sense. And if you think to yourself, well, gosh, i got to see a little bit of that edge. Just do little dots or dashes, just enough to say, I can see that edge. You know, use it, use your subliminal line.
and just kind of look at the darkest areas and put those in. Everything else we'll get later. Cool thing about using pencils is you can add pressure and make it darker or you can keep it fairly light, just lighten up a little bit on it. So you can get those subtle changes of value. Or you don't get that with the ink. All you get is black. But with that, you know, the closer the line is, the, the darker the value. A little shine in his eye, so I'm going to leave that old spot of light out and kind of see where it goes. <laughs> this part, you want to throw it in pretty quick. Even if it's not quite right, you can adjust it from here because this blue is easy to adjust. If any of you like comic book art, back in the good old days, comic book art was done with blue pencils. And then they'd ink on top of that because the blue was not picked up by the camera. It's called non-photo blue. So drawing with blue pencils is something that a lot of people used to do. Get rid of all that graphite and see what I've done. Remember, there's spots that you can just leave out. And as I go, just like we did with our ink, I'm going to get rid of the graphite. There's a whole lot more that we're going to draw in here. So it's, again, not important that it, it looks perfect to you. But you want to get the structure, you want to get the composition, you want to get your object in there as best you can. It's kind of cool that the, the kneaded eraser will take out all the graphite and leave most of the colored pencil in. doesn't leave it all, but most of it. probably noticed too I'm not following exactly my pencil line It's because the more I get into it the more I find that my pencil line wasn't exactly what I wanted or where it should be so I adjust I think a lot of art is just trusting your intuitions I'm cutting off his little tail there at the end. I guess that's okay.
There, most of my graphite is gone. Now I don't have to worry about it mixing with my colors and turning muddy. So our emphasis area is the head. We want to spend a little extra time, make sure that that's just fine. Then as you come down to the body, you can get a little more sketchy. Um, and even as we come down the legs, even more sketchy until you just fade it out. People want to see the drawing. They want to see that, that sketchiness, that juiciness. But you can tighten up into the head if you want to. Here's a pretty good painter uh, that I really liked. His name's John Singer Sargent. And uh, he would do really tight hands and faces. But everything else was just kind of thrown in there. Oh, gorgeous stuff. Have you ever had a chance to look up John Singer Sargent? Lots of portraits that are just lovely. So from here, I need some contrast. My structure is pretty good. Composition is okay. It's not the greatest, but it'll do. And, and this is just all practice anyway, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my black and I'm really going to solidify where everything goes. Um, and there's not a lot of black, a little bit on his tail, a little bit up in the back, a little here and there, a little bit in the nose, a little bit in the ears. So there's not a lot, but I need that contrast. So I'm going to grab my black and I'm just going to go in. I'm going to start with the eyes. And just do a little bit of that around there. And now we're gonna we're kind of shading it like you would with a, a pencil. I'm gonna just leave a little bit of light in that eye, just a little bit. Even though I don't see it, um, I'm gonna leave a little bit of that in there. It makes the eye look more alive. Same thing with this other eye. leave a little bit of that light in there and then any place else that looks pretty dark to me just a couple spots here and there around the ears the tips of the ears It helps define those areas. Maybe some of his little brow ridges there. That's going to help those areas to pop. We need that contrast. You're doing hair, that feathered line, that little flecky line is a good one to use. The nose is pretty dark, so I guess we better go into that. And you can add some pressure to those areas that are really dark.
a little bit of extra time that you spend on the face it's going to be well worth it because that's really everybody kind of goes to the face that's their emphasis area The more color we add to it, the more structure we'll get, the more form we get, the more detail we get. And it's still interesting in that we've lost all those edges up in there. So that it makes it interesting. These little wrinkles are kind of dark that are up in there. But not all of it. Some of it is. So you kind of pick and choose, just like you do on anything else. That tail's pretty dark. You can probably just scribble through it. On the tail, um, just leave those edges nice and nice and fuzzy. You know that feathered feathered edge, feathered line. A lot of that deer is very brown, but I don't want to use brown. Brown by itself is not as pretty. There's some different browns that you've got in there. There's kind of a red brown. It's called mahogany. I like that one. There's another one that's just a light brown kind of a... I think I like that one better than just brown. So if I just take my light brown and go through anything that's brown, and I'm just going to scribble in this color. Most of it is fairly light. Just start scribbling that in. I'm going to avoid his nose. I think the nose is, this part of his nose is more blue. So I'm going to just kind of avoid some of that up in there. If it's if it's white or blue, if it's in shadow, just leave it out. Antlers. Hopefully you're starting to see the object kind of fading in. You can go over that blue with this too. Remember we're layering in colors. So we're going to have like five different layers of colors when we're done.
more color the better in my opinion sometimes you get wild and wacky colors and they look great Using the side of your pencil here is a great way to get color in very quickly. Let's see, what now? Blue, maybe? Lots of, the, of blue in there. Uh, his nose, all that up in there is blue, very blue. Some of the shadowy areas in the white part can be very blue. Like up in up in this little part of his face that's all white, a lot of it is blue. Your mind kind of looks at it and translates it to gray, but it's kind of blue. All that stuff under his chin, kind of blue. Some of his chin is even too. His nose, much of his nose. ears Underneath his belly, even though his belly's kind of white, it's really not white because it's in shadow. And I'm going over the brown. I'm not worried that that brown's going to look funny with the blue in it because we're, we've still got to add some orange and some purple to it and it makes it go neutral. It's kind of a pinky purple in there it's called magenta i'm thinking i need some of that up in the head and in the ears maybe in some of the the fur so i'm gonna i'm gonna try some of this magenta up in there it'll mix with the blue and go more purple it might go a little red or a little lavender in places that's okay 
I really like it with the blue. It turns kind of a purpley. I can put some of that over that brown even. It's going to warm up the brown. It'll turn it a little more reddish orange. It'll warm up that blue. So it's not quite so cool. You can put it anywhere you feel like you need to. Doesn't have to go all over. You can kind of pick and choose where you put it. And here, I have to tell you, color, even though it's nice, it's kind of like frosting on a cake, it's not as important as value. Lights and darks. Now if we add a little bit of orange to that, or yellow, it's going to turn it a little more orange or red. And if we add some purple, it'll go on the cooler side. I hope you like that magenta color in there. It's probably not a color you would have chosen to put in there. But again, color's not as important. This goes over that brown. Any blue that you got in there will turn purple. The colors you choose really are up to you. You could do the psychedelic, and if your values are correct, it'll still work out. It'll still be okay. Maybe some of that mahogany. Mahogany is kind of a brown red. Again, you don't have to have it everywhere. Just try it. See if you like it. Go over some of that magenta. Go over the brown. Go over the blue with it. Who knows? You might like that color. And if you don't, you don't have to use it. I find that we all have kind of a color preference, color palette that we like. So this is that mahogany over the top of some of that. Again, I don't have to go over everything. I can choose what I go over. But it's going to look a little more on the red side. I really like it in the antlers.
One reason I like the Prismacolors better is because when you layer in the Prismacolors, uh, they smooth out a little bit. And then their Prismacolor makes a thing called a blender. And it, it just, you can put it over the top of it and it blends all the colors together. And I like that. But then that's a personal preference. I like the fact that colored pencils don't smear as easily as pencil does. But they can smear. You still got to be kind of careful with them. So I'm going to go back to the purple. It's my darkest color. And I want this to now blend. I want it to be a little smoother. So I'm going to add some pressure to it. I'm going to start out with the nose, adding some pressure to it. And I'm just blending all those colors. Kind of went underneath. And if you want, if you think, well, I can see some more of that darker area up in there. I'm just going to take my purple and use that. And this is just just adding some pressure to it. And if you think to yourself, oh, I see some green in there, like the, his belly looks kind of green, so maybe some of this under there, go ahead and add it. See what happens. That green and that red will combine and go kind of a nice, cool brown. Does it bother you? You can't see the top of his head. I mean, it's it's pretty well gone. You can sort of see it, but it's like that ink thing. You let it go. Doesn't matter. It's kind of fun. These are probably not the colors that you would have used. I'm, I'm kind of trying to make a point here that color is not as important as value. So you can use any color, wild and crazy colors. As long as your values are correct, it's going to look okay. You can even step it further. And use some really crazy colors. A 
I want to hurry through this because I want to use that orange in there. There's a red orange that I think might be good in there. Now that the red and the orange is going to mix with this purple and the red's going to go redder and the orange is going to go more brown. So I'm going to grab some of that red orange. Let me just mix that in there. On the top of the purple, it goes kind of more of a red-violet. On the blue, it's going to go a little more brown or gray. So all these things are happening, and sometimes your eye looks at it and you're like, I don't know what to do with this. And look how nice and colorful that is without being brown. It's kind of brown, but it's colorful brown. And if you want it even warmer, you can add some yellow or some, uh, some more orange to it if you want. little bit maybe of that yellowy orange up in the antlers because they're quite warm. Anytime you add yellow to something, it's going to warm it up. Basically, this is drawing with color. We're, we're using colors to get our values. We're using colors to get the textures. Place for your signatures right in front. Have a lovely day. And remember, art makes life better. It does. <laughs>